Did you say? Welcome, everyone, to our October meeting with the Franklin Town Board of Aldermen. I call this meeting to order. We'll go down the agenda. First uh, item is the approval of the minutes of September 3rd, 2013. Uh, town Board minutes. And then we got the minutes also from our mid-month meeting, right? There's a continuation. That's right. Of course. Of course. Anybody want to talk about those minutes? All in favor, raise your hand. Okay. We'll go ahead and try to catch the uh, public session first. Uh, Bruce Kohler for public session. What do you got? So about school buses? Uh, yes, about school buses. We live just below a hill in our neighborhood, and uh, it's a blind hill. And the school bus stops every weekday at 3.08, right at this intersection. Now it's a blind hill, and people fly over that hill, creating a traffic hazard. Yeah. So just asking that it is a school bus stop, just requesting a school bus stop ahead. Uh, it is a neighborhood where children play. We would like to have children playing mm -hmm. signs in there, what just to make is? people aware. What street is it? It's Pauline oh, Avenue. Oh. Yeah. So, so you're, you're saying you'd like to see? I'd some, like to see some signs out there, warning signs, caution yeah, signs, caution signs. You know, the yellow ones. That okay. We, we put, get a, We put those up, or is it school? I guess it's in our maybe with the. Our jurisdiction would probably be, I, mean, I think we certainly could now, uh, whether or not, the, but yeah, uh, that makes some sense. We can get our men and women to look, that, look at that, and uh, that's a good one. Thanks. Okay. Thank you. Shanna Atkins. I'm not here to beg money or anything along those lines from you this evening. Real early, thank you. I'm real early, if that's the case. Oh, cool. um, you got handouts. We do have handouts. Oh, they may have more than enough to go around right there, but if you need extras, please hang on to them. Um, I won't take up much time. I see you have a very busy schedule for tonight. First, let me start off by saying thank you for talking about the funding for this year. I know you all had a hard decision ahead of you with as many applicants for the nonprofit funding pool, and we are greatly we're very gracious, rather, for the funds that we were distributed. So thank you so much. Um, again, I'm not here tonight to raise awareness for any funds. I'm really just here to raise awareness in general for the issue that we're facing at CareNet and this community in large with the issue of surrounding hunger. Before you, you have a letter that was actually submitted recently to the Franklin Press and the Macon County News addressing this said issue. and. Um, a community awareness campaign, if you will, that's coming up at the end of this week. It'll start October 11th and go to October 13th. And more specifically, it's actually um, a hunger challenge, simply enough. Um, there is something that we can all do right now to help raise awareness for those who find themselves struggling with food insecurity. And again, on October 11th, First United Methodist uh, Church, their youth group, is leading this hunger challenge. Um, as part of the participation in the Stop Hunger Now campaign, which is a national organization. The mission uh, that they'll actually be doing on November 2nd is to package some of the meals that we distribute through the food pantry to families in need. Um, already many others are participating or have committed to this challenge, um, including other Methodist churches in the community, uh, members of the Franklin High School football team, Go Panthers, students at MVI and, a and a FHS, and various community members. We dare you all tonight to try living on $3 per day per person for three days. Again, October 11th through the 13th, if those three days don't work for you, we're more than flexible. We just want to get the awareness out there and get the experience in these people's hands that can make a difference in this community. Um, help us raise awareness of the issues surrounding hunger and take the opportunity to learn more about the Hunger Challenge campaign. You can either contact me directly at Karenet uh, with actually in your packet, tonight, you have the information that you would actually receive from 
uh, First United Methodist Church as well as what I would be able to provide to you. There are recipes and ideas, if you will, to kind of help you get through those three days. We will uh, lend support if you guys need to cry. Call us, tell us you need some assistance and candy. Uh, we'll charge you for it, though, unfortunately. Um, but in all actuality, I really think that by doing this as a board, uh, representing this community, it would go a long way. It shows this community that you support them uh, through the hard times, good and bad, which we already know you do that. But this is a great opportunity for me personally, and I think for you all, to learn something from this in terms of what our families are facing here in Macon County, especially the children. Again, 30.6% of children are considered food insecure, so that's one in three kids, and that's got to change. And I think it starts with education and raising awareness like this initiative. So I challenge you all um, to the challenge. Gets the gauntlets thrown down. So uh, please, if you do participate, give us some feedback. Whether you write something to the press, uh, put it on Facebook, those of you that Facebook, um, or even approach Keith and some of the news outlets here and, and get on board with them and, and let them know what you experienced, what you learned from it. Um, I intend to do so. I'll be journaling for those three days. I'm actually looking to do it for a full week based on the national food stamp average of 450. But uh, we thought this three dollars for three days challenge would really be a significant challenge and not. So, again, I thank you for your time, consideration, and um, best. Thank you. Oh, thank, thank you. you. Any takers? Uh, we'll go back to the persons to be heard. Uh, Peggy Huskisson. Peggy. Share. Um, my name is Peggy Huskison. I am co-administrator for my dad's estate, Jean Huskison, the William Jean Huskison estate. The land adjacent to the Nikwasi Indian Mound was purchased in the late 60s and has been in the Huskison family for nearly half a century. My parents, Jean and June Huskison, worked diligently to carve out a family business that had positive impacts on Macon County and the town of Franklin. My parents were patriotic and dedicated to fostering a business environment that provided jobs, yet still maintained and honored the sacred grounds of the Nikwasi Indian Mount. I still uphold that sense of sacredness to our Cherokee Indians. Unfortunately today, I must bring your focus to another type of enterprise that has a very high impact of focus for us because it is a wood cutting operation. I say high impact due to the following reasons. First of all, it is an eyesore. It shows uh, very little respect and honor toward the sacredness of the Indian mound. If the operation is so enhancing, then I might ask why the landowner has leased it out directly behind the Huskisson property rather than behind his own property. I don't think it's that uh, fostering of a good business enterprise. Safety and pollution issues also concern me. I think pest, critters, rats, snakes, spiders, and other insects might be drawn to this sort of environment. I'm also concerned about the aspects of fires that might happen amidst all that firewood. I do not see how the surrounding buildings could be left unharmed should there be a fire down there. I have photographs that I'd like to just, I'll start with you, pass them that way that do show chunks of wood that have rolled into the foundation of the Huskisson building and I'm surprised that those chunks of wood could not also roll directly into the street, possibly causing accidents. It's a really, really high wood stack. Um, there's a town park, as you well know, very close by, and what's to keep someone from venturing, possibly a child even venturing close to that, and it do uh, fall on them to say. I do not know why the Huskisson property has been used to refuel gas up and oil chainsaws. As you can see, there's been spills on the asphalt there at the Huskisson property, rather than that being kept where the land is being leased. 
Um, I think that EPA regulations would not be satisfied with oil and gas and petroleum spills, but I don't know that we'd want to go that high up to um, merely get a wood, wood pile moved. The third thing <coughs> is the noise nuisance. At this time, all of the tenants of the Huskisson commercial rental property have complained of how very noisy the wood cutting operation is. This noise pollution is unbearable. I have been there with all those chainsaws going, and it is the decibel level is really, really high. One tenant has rented the same office space for over 40 years, and until now has never voiced a concern. Another tenant is giving up and moving to due to the noise issues. If you were looking to rent an office space, I think you would have second thoughts due to the decibel level of the chainsaws and witnessing the unloading of the huge logs. I would like to request that the town aldermen and zoning officials investigate and initiate rules that take into account boundaries between high impact, wood cutting, wood chopping, versus <coughs> low impact businesses such as the um, acupuncture, the insurance agency, the barber shop. Additionally, I would like to request that noise ordinances be reinstated by the town of Franklin so that low impact commercial properties are not overwhelmed and bullied by the, um, and bullied over by the high impact noise polluting businesses. Thank you very much for your time and consideration. And I didn't think I could questions. I'm not an expert on this, but. I can tell you, you requested that we look into it. Believe me, we have, we are, we continue. Sometimes the tools are not precisely there that gives you every remedy, but we're doing the best we can. Uh, honestly, we are. Well, it is not, I guess some people maybe think that our, the Huskisons are renting that, but we are not renting that out. It's owned by another landowner. Mm -hmm. and. You know, it's just so close. I think those pictures probably show you some things. Um, additionally, there's a huge hole. I don't know if it's a sinkhole, but it's covered up with all the wood right now, tons and tons of that firewood. And um, I, that might be something that you, you might want to consider too. I don't know what you can do. But please, it might, you know, I'm pleased that he's doing so well, but at the same time, I too have a vested interest in the commercial property um, that's there too. And it's sad that one, one, biz, one set of businesses are negated by some other set that's just moved in unexpectedly, you might, um, I might add. But thank you very much. Thank you, Dan? No preamble, just get to the point. It better be something different than I've been asking for the same thing for a year and a half now, and I think I've figured out what the problem is. The problem is you don't have a clue in the world what I've been asking for, because last month you're talking about Dogwood Avenue. I never mentioned that in my lifetime. And I don't want to ruin your night or nothing, but there's no Dogwood Avenue in the town of Franklin. And what I've been asking for was to clean the block up. That involved 441, that involved Maple Street, that involved Dogwood Drive. I, I just can't see what the problem is. I want to get the place cleaned up. It's, it's October, the tourists are here. I'm talking about all that wood along the road, the mess along the road. Why can't we get it cleaned up? I, I, I drive down Old Murphy Road the other day. There's there's 11 guys that count standing there all day. You got five trucks out there. You got plenty of people. I mean, we're all done. I mean, would it, would it kill you all to clean the place up? I watched it on the news not long ago. They had a, a big story about Gary, Indiana. What a dump that place is. You ever been through there? It's terrible. And. They had the big news story. The whole town, everybody got together and they decided to clean the place up. And uh, they were just doing a great job, see, like, you know, about time they cleaned it up. And it'd be nice if the people here in Franklin got together and cleaned up the place a little bit. And, I mean, you're, you're trying to be a tourist town and you got all the people on the payroll and you got the trucks, you got the equipment. 
Why can't we get it cleaned up a little bit? Is that, is that big of a deal? Thank you, Dan. It, you know, would an hour's work kill anybody here? Thank you. I understand there's a couple other people signed up to be heard. Yes. Come on up. Um, my name is Dr. Tracy Dogan. I'm the one who sent the letters about the wood pile to certain officials because I discovered I'm trying to run an acupuncture and a healing center there. And I really do like the area um, and so do my clients. And the wood pile has been gradually getting more out of hand and invasive. Um, the noise is getting louder, more frequent. It, it can go on for days. And um, so I decided to look up the Town of Franklin, North Carolina Code of Ordinances and found that the wood pile was in violation of some of the ordinances. And I'm asking the Town of Franklin, um, you know, to enforce these ordinances um, so that we can stay there and um, conduct our business. And Peggy, Peggy's the landowner, and she's, she said it very eloquent, um, what is going on there, and I think it's um, not fair that, you know, one person can upset so many businesses. And I have actually, um, surrounding businesses signed a petition as well, um, that they're bothered by this situation. I really, Dr. I can't stress enough that I think I'm speaking for the entire board. If we felt like we had the tools, and I know you have an interpretation of, of the statute. I understand that. Of course, we have our legal staff and our uh, meeting men as well. It's not something we're turning the blind eye to. It's just that you have to go in certain directions legally here, and we're doing we feel like what we can, if in fact there is something more. Uh, again, I'm going to go ahead and open this up a little bit at the board if somebody has another slant on it. But uh, we just, up to, up to a point in time, your hands are tied, even though it's a, an activity that you just really don't like. But I can promise you that it's on the town's radar screen, screen right in the middle. And if, and if in fact you are right, and I'll ask the council to double check that, but uh, uh, it's something that we're not happy with. Understood. It's just not that easy just to say because you're not happy with it. Now the question is what tools do you have and all of that, but we're, we're with you on it. It's just something that's not as easy as it might seem. Okay. Because, you know, like I found out there was a repeal done last March on the noise ordinance and I, I really can't understand that. But whatever, I, I don't know how that got repealed, and I want to know how we can reinstate the old ordinances. Well, thank you. We, we appreciate you being in town. Okay. Anybody else? Yes. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Claudia Mathis. I live on 182 San McClure Road. I'm here to support uh, also uh, Peggy Hutchinson. I am representing the business that left. Uh, we have to leave. We have no option. Uh, our business is 95% conducted on the telephone. We have a very large jewelry uh, business that is being conducted by, by Amazon. So I contact all of our real uh, with, uh, resale business. Our clients are all high-end uh, um, jewelers in all over the country, so I don't have to make phone calls. It was impossible for me to be on the phone, not for an hour at a time. We're talking five, six hours a day. Uh, I would love to invite you all to come down. Uh, this is not a matter of it being a, a little nuisance or uh, you know, a little, a little disruptive. The walls, the back walls of the trailer are vibrating. This is how loud it is. There's five, six chainsaws running for four to six hours straight. You cannot open, you cannot walk away from it, you cannot walk out the door, because the moment you open the door, it's even louder. Uh, the gas fumes from these, uh, from, from these machines are unbearable. 
the trucks when they're unloading these huge logs, I mean, we're talking uncut logs. When they're unloading them, and they're unloading them behind a trailer where the wood pile at times is larger than the trailer, is frightening to say the least. As a business person, I have to tell you, I don't have customers coming to my business. I'm lucky. But it was impossible for me to do my job. So we had no choice but to leave. And we just moved in there in May. It was very sad because we liked the place. We loved like Peggy. We took uh, a whole new office in Franklin. Both the owner of the business and myself just moved to Franklin a year ago. We loved the town, found it by accident, fell in love with it, fell in love with all your people. Um, we want to have our business here. Um, and I can tell you as a new resident to drive into town, and that's the first big thing you see. It looks real, it looks a mess. You have the beautiful greenway on the right hand side and you turn your head and you see a mountain of wood. I know it's on your radar. Uh, maybe I can give you a little more ammunition because I'm also a Homeland Security certified rescue worker for disasters. I've done rescue for major disasters for the last 20 years. I've worked every single major storm in the United States on a national level. I can tell you that between Hurricane Katrina and Sandy and all the other major storms that I've worked in, if you have a microburst, a tornado, or a hurricane in this town, and that catches wind, you will have five to 10,000 bullets flying down that highway. There's no way that they can move. If a tornado or a microburst happens to be in that area, there's no way that they can move that wood in time or secure it. And those locks weigh, what, three pounds maybe? It doesn't take much. If that goes flying and the town of Franklin is aware and has not been able to secure the situation, I can guarantee you, because I've seen it in New Orleans and I've seen it in New Jersey, the town will be held liable for not doing something about this. So that might be a little bit of an ammunition that you will have. It's not safe. Thank you. Thank you, Claudia. Anybody else? Person's been heard?